So you're DuPont in the late 1930s. You're a chemical company that's been around for more than 100 years. Any company that's existed for that amount of time should have made a name for itself ages ago. But even though you're doing well, you just haven't really popped off yet. That was until 1938, when a doctor accidentally discovers a material called Teflon that's so versatile, so useful, so unbelievable, that it changes the course of DuPont forever. You know Teflon, the stuff used in non-slick pans. Well, good thing it's Teflon. Made with a chemical called C8, Teflon revolutionized the cooking industry for people all over the world. They won't stick! That's why it's called non-stick! I don't know what non-stick means in Texas, sweetheart, but me! And Teflon and C8 went on to be used in a ton of other consumer goods. Popcorn bags, waterproof jackets, dental floss, food containers, makeup, pizza boxes, all had some form of C8 or C8 derivatives in them. The only problem was C8 and most of the chemicals like it are extremely toxic and are what's known as forever chemicals because they never break down. But what the public doesn't know, they'll keep buying. So we'll just keep this between us. Now that's cooking. So C8 became widely used in a bunch of products that come in contact with people's food. And making C8 takes a lot of work. A lot of work that produces a lot of chemical waste that we have to get rid of somewhere. So why not dump it in the waterways around our factories? I mean, come on, you're not gonna pay for expensive, responsible chemical waste disposal when there's a perfectly good river right there next to your factory. So over the decades, C8 spread from the rivers, into farms, into tap water, into the animals that we eat, and ultimately, into us. To where today, 99.7% of Americans have C8 in their bloodstream, with C8 being linked to at least 6 diseases, including testicular cancer and kidney cancer. So how did an obscure chemical company get into the bloodstream of nearly every single American? And most importantly, how did they get away with it? Just asking for a friend. This is how DuPont poisoned the world. <gasps> oh, well, good thing it's Teflon. Even burned food won't stick to Teflon, so it's always easy to clean. Cookware never needs scouring. If it has DuPont, Teflon. Chemical research come the thousands of products that contribute to better living. The DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living. DuPont started in 1802 in Delaware. It was the brainchild of a French-American chemist and industrialist named... <sighs> Il était Irene Dupont de Nemours. Et le terre Irene Dupont de Nemours. Okay, not bad. I can't get the uh sound, but close enough. And DuPont started out as a gunpowder mill and production company out of all things. You had a lot of business supplying the wars that broke out throughout the 19th century. By the time the American Civil War hit, DuPont was the biggest supplier of gunpowder to the US military. So DuPont started out as war profiteers, which if you've seen our war profiteer videos, you know that this can be a very lucrative business to be in. Ironically enough, the founder of DuPont came to America to escape the French Revolution but it was never enough. You lived and breathed innovation, which led to the development of hundreds of different chemicals and materials over the years. Kevlar used in bulletproof armor today, lycra, nylon, all these revolutionary materials that would go on to change the world were all made by DuPont. Even your carpeting. And DuPont makes all that. But something was missing. So you started buying up all the gunpowder businesses you could find. It was so extreme that by 1912, your shopping spree caught the government's attention because you started turning the gunpowder business into your own monopoly. And as soon as you were declared a monopoly, you were ordered to divest from the industry. And your age of controlling the gunpowder business was over. Without the cash cow that was gunpowder, you needed something else to bring in revenue. And since DuPont were already experts at chemistry, you got involved in almost every chemical related industry in the book. But everything changed in 1938. The world was on the verge of World War II, and Dr. Plunkett, whom we talked about earlier, accidentally discovers Teflon. Why don't most people know about this dark side of DuPont? Because DuPont is a master at branding. However, designing a profitable brand can be really difficult and expensive. 
Luckily to date, there's a one-stop shop for all your graphic design and branding needs. And that one-stop shop is Canva. Canva allows you to make these amazing professional-looking Instagram stories, YouTube thumbnails, YouTube intro animations, slide decks, desktop wallpapers, infographics, even full-blown videos. It's honestly pretty insane how much you can do. Canva has thousands of easy-to-use customizable templates made by professional designers, stuff that actually looks shockingly good. It's super intuitive to use, you can work on mobile or desktop. Canva basically makes it impossible for you to make something ugly. And Canva even has a completely free version as well. But you really want to get Canva Pro, or else you're going to miss out on a ton of tools that are going to save you hours of tedious work. One of my favorite features of Canva Pro is their Canva Content Planner, which allows you to schedule the stuff you make in Canva to go live on almost all the major social media platforms. Social media schedulers usually cost around the same amount as Canva Pro anyways, so this feature alone pays for itself. My other favorite feature is their instant one-click background remover. Removing a background is usually a really frustrating process you have to do manually in a more advanced editing tool, but this one is in one click. So if you're interested in trying out Canva Pro, they've got you with a free 45-day trial with the link below. A ton of my friends use Canva Pro, and you can always downgrade to their free version so you have nothing to lose. Give it a try for free for 45 days by using the link in the video description below. Thanks to Canva for sponsoring this video. Makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Nearly everything in our daily lives is improved by chemistry. From transportation to the clothes we wear. Chemistry helps bring us better food, makes our homes more beautiful, more comfortable, helps protect our health, and adds to the enjoyment of our leisure time. Teflon is made using a chemical called C8, also known as PFOA, or this long word. Being that it repels water, oil, stains, and can withstand a lot of heat, Teflon was perfect to coat the tanks and military vehicles the army was going to need for World War II. Instead of rain, mud, and the elements damaging and corroding tanks over time, it would simply slide off the surface if it was coated in Teflon. The C8 in Teflon was important to keep the material from clumping while it was being applied. And at the same time, C8 or PFOA was seen as completely safe. This new wonder material could change the world. But there was a problem. Teflon production in the 1940s was expensive. So expensive that making everyday items like pans or rain jackets was unthinkable. So to make enough Teflon to meet the growing demand, while keeping expenses as low as possible, you would need an affordable source of C8. And that's where 3M came in. Around the same time, a French engineer named Marc Gregor had the idea of coating all his fishing gear in Teflon to keep it from getting tangled. No one really knows if this ever worked, because at the exact same time, his wife had an even better idea that took the spotlight. Teflon coated pans and pots, cooking equipment that wouldn't need to be scrubbed or soaked to get clean. People could just wipe the food off with a damp cloth. And so Teflon pans were born, and it would change the course of the food industry forever. Suddenly, the world realized all the possibilities that came with Teflon, and the manufacturing and distribution of it skyrocketed. Some people use a little oil or butter when they cook so that things don't stick to the pan. But I use polytetraflora ethylene. Some sports call it non-stick for short. Mmm, now that's cooking. So you sat back and watched the fortune start rolling in. The world started going crazy for non-stick pans, self-cleaning ovens, and Teflon-coated furniture. But you knew this craze was unsustainable. You see, even though the US government didn't recognize PFOA as a dangerous chemical, both DuPont and 3M knew it was potentially toxic. With every batch of C8 you bought from 3M, the instructions for disposing it were the same. Incinerate it, or send it to chemical waste facilities. Even your own disposal instructions specify that it should never be flushed into sewers or surface water, which means that way back before Teflon grew into the global material it is today, you and 3M had an inkling that eventually something was going to go wrong. But that didn't stop you from making millions from the new Teflon-coated inventions that were being created almost every day. So how did DuPont go about following those instructions to dispose of C8? Dumping it into the planet, of course. In one town alone, Parkersburg, West Virginia, the DuPont Teflon manufacturing plant dumped hundreds of thousands of pounds of C8 into the Ohio River. And that was just the beginning. What's this silver stone coated fry pan doing in an oven? Letting you know that durable non-stick silver stone is available on bakeware, such as cake pans, muffin pans, cookie sheets, and loaf pans. And since most foods won't stick to Silverstone, cleaning up is quick and easy. 
So let Silverstone take you out of the frying pan and into bakeware. Because the process to manufacture Teflon had been so expensive to begin with, you needed to keep expenses as low as possible. And dumping CA into rivers and unprotected landfills was so much cheaper than actually disposing it the right way or building incinerators. But dumping CA into unlined pits and rivers meant it spread rather quickly. So within a few years, PFOA chemicals had seeped into the groundwater surrounding Parkersburg and nearby towns. The same groundwater that was being used to produce tap water, ready to drink for more than 100,000 people. You and 3M had your suspicions, but you didn't want to find out whether or not they were true. I mean, if you really didn't know C8 was toxic, there would always be some plausible deniability. The I didn't know so you can't blame me card that the government always pulls. But it got to a point where researchers at DuPont just couldn't let their curiosity go. And in 1961, they started secret medical studies on PFOA and C8, behind closed doors more than two decades after mass production of Teflon started. And what they found was horrifying. C8, the same chemical that had been marketed as completely safe for decades, was extremely toxic to human and animals. Exposure to C8 increased the size of liver in rats, rabbits, and dogs. And if it had this effect on animals, who knows what it would have had on humans. But the profits were just too good to switch off. So the sale of Teflon continued, and the research results were carefully locked up. For a few years, it looked like you could keep your secrets. That was until DuPont researchers discovered crazy high concentrations of PFOA in your workers' own blood. And the race was on. It was only a matter of time before something happened that exposed the dangers of PFOAs. So to make sure the victims stay quiet, you had to get to them first. So DuPont started watching and monitoring their workers in secrets. In 1981, 3M reported that PFOA caused birth defects in rats. So you reassigned pregnant women away from the Teflon manufacturing line and carefully observed their babies for any sort of defects. And when two out of seven babies were born with eye defects, well, you deny any and all responsibility. Then in 1984, another report came out that PFOA dust was getting through the factory chimneys, settling on land far away from the factory and had gotten into the local water supply. But again, you do not disclose this damning information. By the 90s, your PFOA business is worth more than a billion dollars. This is generational wealth only a few could dream of, and you weren't just going to give that up over C8 possibly being dangerous. So Teflon sales and ads kept growing. Chemistry is the, is the practice of magic. People think of Teflon and think of frying pans. Teflon is not one thing. Putting Teflon on a surface will stop bugs from crawling up trees. They'll fall right off the tree. Teflon as a chain loop is something I've come up with for bicycles. You know, only DuPont makes Teflon. And you can use it in satellites, on fabrics, or leather. When's the last time you heard about a, a leather raincoat? <laughs> you can let your imagination run wild. It's not often that you get to make something new in this world. While DuPont kicked the can down the road once more, except now decades of CA exposure had passed, and its effects were finally starting to show. Perfect eggs don't always start with the egg. They start with Silverstone. It's the most durable nonstick surface ever made by DuPont. And just to prove our point, we'll cook some eggs with these letters and still not hurt Silverstone's nonstick performance. See? So no matter what you're making. Parkersburg, West Virginia, the late 90s. A farmer by the name Wilbur Tennant was going through something strange. He had come across two dead deer and two dead cows at a nearby river. The deers had blood coming out of their noses. I've taken two dead deer and two dead cattle off of this ripple right here. And they tell me the deer died with hemorrhing disease. The blood run out of their nose and out of their mouth, but uh, they've never, DNR has never checked into it. The EPA of the state of West Virginia is trying to cover this stuff up. Coincidentally, over the past few years, 153 of his 600 cows have been found dead, all with the same MO. They show bleeding from their noses and has signs of serious illness and damage to their internal organs. All the cows had access to that same river. A year later, he filmed what happened to his cows. See, she's hemorrhaged out the nose. This is 153 of these animals that I've lost on this farm. Coincidentally, not long before the cows started getting sick, the farmer's brother has sold 66 acres of land to DuPont to be used as a non-hazardous landfill. Also coincidentally, the river led upstream to a factory known as the DuPont Washington Works. It didn't take a genius to put two and two together, so he went to DuPont. But obviously, they denied everything. 
What was even stranger was that whenever he went to anyone in town for help, doctors, vets, and even local politicians and lawyers, no one was willing to help him. Vets wouldn't go to see Wilbur's cows. Lifelong friends of Wilbur and his family ignored them on the streets. They had to change their church four times. So Wilbur reached out to an environmental lawyer outside of Parkersburg named Rob Billets, who spent most of his career representing corporations like DuPont's. The lawyer took the case, and together they traced the cattle's illness to a pipe, clearly labeled DuPont's, that was pumping a green bubbly liquid into the creek from which Wilbur's cows drank, literally like something out of a movie. So in 1999, Rob Billet and Wilbur Tennant filed a federal lawsuit against DuPont's. As DuPont, this was a corporate nightmare for you. Your charade was getting unveiled. Here was a complete nobody, an unknown cattle farmer who could potentially destroy your entire business. So you put the blame on him. It wasn't your non-hazardous waste that was making his cows sick. Wilbur and his family just didn't know how to take care of the cows. If the cows were dying, it was their own fault. Now on paper, some small-time farmer should have given up pretty easily when bombarded with endless legal fees and paperwork. But even if he wanted to give up, his lawyer refused to throw in the towel. Then Billet found the smoking gun. In one letter from DuPont to the EPA, Billet found a reference to a cryptically named chemical, PFOA. No one at his firm knew what it was, but Billet and his client were getting close to the truth. So when they came asking for documents DuPont had on the subject, DuPont outright refused. They may have found the smoking gun, but DuPont wasn't going to hand up a sign and stamp confession until they had no choice. Billet got a court order compelling DuPont to hand over all the information they had on PFOA, and DuPont submitted more than 110,000 pages. If you can't suppress the truth, you can at least hide it between 100,000 pages and hope it's never found. But Billet recognized the tactic and knew he was getting close. And by the end of the year 2000, he had everything he needed. A document explaining that in 1990, DuPont had knowingly dumped toxic PFOA waste into the landfill near Wilbur's property, knowing it drained into their land. Wilbur Tennant and his family settled. The farmer's fight was over, but for the lawyer, in his own words he said, quote, I was irritated, end quote irritated that DuPont could just get away with a slap on the wrist and a simple fine to pay. So the battle was just beginning. There was one email in particular where after I had alerted the company that I had finally kind of started figuring this out and I was aware that PFOA was what was in the landfill and it was what the cows were drinking and it was in the public water supply. There was a, uh, an email where the uh, council made a reference to F him. Uh, he knows about this now and F him. So he's so Don't get stuck. No, no. Or you'll be sorry now. Don't get stuck. No, no. Unless you want to develop a strong attachment to dinner, choose a DuPont nonstick. Because whether you spend a little or a lot, you're guaranteed of getting a quality nonstick certified by DuPont. Look for these seals. Oh, you'll be sorry now. Don't get stuck. The farmer's case had opened the floodgates, and Billet was just getting started. Under the Toxic Substances Control Act, the EPA could only test chemicals if it was provided with evidence of harm, and the farmer's cow had given Billet exactly that. So in 2005, DuPont settled with the EPA on a $16.5 million fine for hiding the toxicity and spread of PFOA. But that wasn't the end. More and more people from Parkersburg started coming forward as they found out about PFOA and the effects it had on humans and animals. Joseph Kiger, a night school teacher, joined Billet's team as lead plaintiff. He had liver disease, possibly related to PFOA in his drinking water. And when he tried talking to the West Virginia Department of Natural Resources, the Parkersburg State Department of Environmental Protection, the Water Division, the local health department, he was either shut down or lied to every single time. But the major breakthrough came when Billet and his team finished a new medical study of 70,000 people. It proved that PFOA was in fact linked to at least six diseases including cancer and thyroid disease, and that DuPont had at least known about the cancer for years. All of a sudden, thousands of people were now standing to sue DuPont. Because of the study, DuPont was now faced with a lawsuit and criminal investigation from the EPA and was ordered to phase out the production of CA in the US over a generous 10 years. 
During the course of our lawsuit, as we're providing more of this information to the US EPA, and the US EPA is getting more and more concerned about it, they've brought a lawsuit. They've started actually a criminal investigation uh, in 2005. DuPont eventually settles our case in West Virginia. Uh, they also then settle the, the case that the US EPA had brought against them. And one of the things they also agree to do is they announce that they will have a 10-year phase-out of any further manufacturing or use of PFOA in the United States. DuPont was on the verge of losing its most profitable products. But as DuPont, you had a very simple solution to this. Since every forever chemical had to be regulated individually, you could theoretically switch up the chemical composition of C8 a bit and call it a brand new thing that isn't banned. Enter Gen X, a less toxic version of C8, sold by a new spin-off company called Chamores, since the branding of DuPont was damaged. The DuPont company spun off the division that had been making Teflon-related materials. They, they spun it off into a new company called Chamores. Um, and the Camours company took over a lot of these plants, including the Parkersburg plant, that had been making these floral products. They shifted over to a new material, which they are referring to now as Gen X. Chamours literally just took over the exact same plants that just a few years earlier were pumping extremely toxic PFOA into the environment. By 2015, all production of PFOA had stopped, just as the production of Gen X was booming. Despite the lawsuits, DuPont stayed profitable, and in 2017, it merged with the Dow Chemical Company to form Dow DuPont, the new face of the chemical industry worth at least $130 billion. DuPont also has an agricultural chemical and seed division called Pioneer Hybrid that was later spun off into a company called Corteva. They sell pesticides and genetically modified seeds, much like the company Monsanto, which is perhaps one of the most controversial corporations on the planet. But that is a very long, dark story that deserves its own feature-length 40-minute-plus documentary that's going to come out next week, or will be already out by the time you're watching this, called Monsanto, the company that owns the world's food supply. But here's the thing. Stories like Monsanto are going to be some of the darkest, most Machiavellian videos I have ever made. Imagine these videos taken to a further extreme, where we're going to uncover how the elite really think, that you're never going to hear them admit. Because if the elite did admit this, they would either be pillaged or sent to the guillotine. Or at the bare minimum, they would have more competition to deal with. So that's why you're never going to hear about this stuff anywhere else. You're not going to hear it from your parents or friends, because they're most likely not in private circles with powerful people. And you're not going to hear it from your business professors, because they're probably broke. But we're going to break it down here, in all its Machiavellian glory. But the thing is, just like DuPont, if I release these teachings to the public, I'm definitely going to get cancelled. So we're not going to be releasing these to the public. All you have to do if you want to get this education that they would never teach you in business school is to click the join button below right next to the subscribe button. If you don't see the button, there's a link in the video description below. Once you sign up, you'll get access to this exclusive documentary when it comes out, or you'll get it immediately if it's already out by the time you're watching this. And unlike an MBA, I'm not going to charge you $55,000 to $161,000 to learn this stuff. Nope, just $5 a month for longer documentaries of the same videos you love that you would not be able to see anywhere else. And this $5 a month is just to cover the cost to produce these videos. Give it a try for a month, and if you don't think this knowledge is worth it, email me and I will personally refund you the money. Pause the video and click that join button below right now. What's up guys, we're in France right now, Paris. Here's the Eiffel Tower. I'm in like the middle floor. Very appropriate being that the founder of DuPont is for France. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're new here, subscribe for more business documentaries just like this one every single week for free. And that's gonna wrap it up. Keep sharpening that mind. Stay dangerous out there and I will see you guys in the next one.